Good evening, good afternoon, uh, good morning, wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with session two of our industry leading options weapons school. We're going to bust it out, man. We're going to start getting into the basics of options. Quick reminder to go watch session one if you didn't already. If you couldn't attend the first session uh, underneath memberships, go down to options weapon school and click right there there it is right at the top 2024 ows options weapon school intel sources investing basics tactical trade planning we did some good work man that was uh that was a lot of fun so again if you're a member that's where it is if you're not a member what are you doing choke yourself make sure you sign up at least for solo amazon uh sometime throughout this training so you can get access to that training it's only 97 bucks a month folks uh, or you get two months for free if you do an annual membership somebody asked in session one about that link and i forgot to give it to you so if you want to join solo amazon to get access to the academic training obviously uh the recordings of it it is right there let me give you the link you can scroll down and do the annual membership like i said that saves you some money you get Two months for free okay so scroll down and you can join uh so one more time because some people the free folks are like where's the replay i'm like well guess what you need to join so members there's a replay i also on the replay page put the files you have your tgo trade plan that we reviewed in depth and then the opcl the options pocket checklist so i love this new website i love the app you got your replay up here any comments that I put right here and then any files I need to add go right over there. This is fantastic. Absolutely love this new website. Any questions, uh, concerns, oh, by the ways about session one? Anybody, hey man, this, that, the other thing. Any questions before we get going? So we knocked out uh, our session one, talking about Intel sources, investing basis, tactical trade planning. Now, tonight, we're going to knock out session number two, options basics. I'm going to talk to you like a caveman, right? Options are not hard at all. They're very, very easy to understand. And they're kind of easy to trade if you know what you're doing, right? I jokingly told you in session one, don't suck. Sergeant Stryker, the Sands of Iwo Jima. Life's tough. It's even tougher when you're stupid. So don't be stupid. I'm going to train you not to be stupid. Now I'm doing a schedule flex. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. is when we're going to do covered calls, collars, and cash secured puts. They're all very kind of similar, those initial basic options tactics. Say it with me. It ain't a strategy, it's a tactic. Okay? So instead of doing it tomorrow night, because I have foundation stuff to do up in Palm Beach. We're going to do this tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Again, if you're not a member, you don't get access to the, to the re replay. So uh, become a member now. Okay. And then uh, keep an eye on your email for next week's schedule. I think Monday night's good. Maybe Tuesday night's good. I think Wednesday's bad. And I forget about Thursday. Just, uh, we'll, I'll tell you what's going on. Okay. Here we go. Just like reporting to Pensacola Naval Air Station for flight training, we take a building block approach with everything that we're doing at Topkin Options in this training. So session two tonight, we're gonna talk about the basics of options, calls and puts. Don't know what those words mean? You're going to by the end of this brief. So what are options? Okay, let me give you just a little history of options. First of all, options have been around probably since people could speak or write on a cave wall, right? Um, you use options often in your life and you probably just don't call them an option. Sometimes you do. Um, but formally, equity options. If you wanna sound smart at a cocktail party, you use the term, I trade equity options. Why? Because there's commodity options, there's all sorts of different derivatives or options. But when you say I trade equity options, 
people will know what you mean. So that's what you're going to learn how to do. I trade equity options. Amazon, Microsoft, NVIDIA, JP Morgan, Raytheon. We trade equity options. Options started, folks, in the early 70s. Smoke-filled rooms with a bunch of Wall Street fat cats who looked around and said, and, and it's interesting because when people get bored on Wall Street, either really good things happen or really bad things. I was in the Chicago Board of Trade, the Chicago Board Options Exchange, at ground zero in the financial crisis. Why do I bring this up? Because bored, coked out 28-year-olds at Goldman Sachs and all these other you know, smart money organizations came up with collateralized debt obligations and credit default swaps. I have an idea, since I haven't slept and I've done coke all night, why don't we take really, really, really bad debt, junk, and we slice that bad debt up into, this is really awesome, bad debt, and this is really scary, bad debt. That's brilliant. And then they all blew up. Okay, so that's an example of bad Wall Street boredom <clears throat> or bad Wall Street thinking. A good example of Wall Street thinking were options. Hey man, I don't have a ton of money to buy a lot of shares in this company. Why don't we come up with the idea of an options contract? Instead of buying thousands and thousands of shares, why don't we, you can buy a couple contracts right options contracts that allow you to control a lot of shares of a stock without actually taking delivery of the stock it's only for a period of time and at a defined price brilliant so instead of coming out of pocket a hundred grand to buy all these shares i can come out of pocket whatever 10 grand brilliant that created the options market. Now, if you followed that, get ready to be an options trader. If you didn't, let's, let's just back up a little bit and we'll talk about really super easy, quote, civilian examples. What are call options? As I alluded to, you use call options often. Let me give you an example. I just got back from Aspen, two nights ago, right out there for the No Fallen Heroes Foundation. I left our fighter jet out there so we can do donor rides. Went around Aspen looking at places, kind of sick of South Florida. I love Colorado. They legalize these medicines at the state level. They're saving lives. Donors are out there. I'm going to move. So get to Aspen, grab my realtor, and we're driving around the first day, the first day I see this house. $5 million house, let's just say. I love it, I want it. Very impulsive whiz, hang on. Why don't, you, you, you're up here for, for 30 days, man. You're up here for a month. Why don't we keep looking around? I love that idea. I don't wanna lose this house. I'll tell you what. Why don't we tell the owner that we're gonna pay them 10 grand, or let's go 10, you know, 50 grand, doesn't matter, but it's a $5 million house. I'm going to pay you 50 grand if you take this home off the market while I go out and look. At the end of the 30 days, I have the right. Buyers have rights. I have the right at the end of the 30 days to buy this home for $5 million. Seller says, yeah, man, I'll take that 50 grand. Awesome. What did I give you? I gave you a time period, 30 days, and I gave you what's called a strike price, 5 million bucks. I, Wiz, the buyer, has the right to buy this home in the next 30 days for 5 million bucks. And it's costing me 50 grand to come out of pocket. Does everybody understand that? I mean, that's welcome to trading options. Now let's talk about what happens. Let's say two weeks after we do this contract, the governor of Colorado announces 
that you see the empty lot next to this house? They're building a new Supermax prison <laughs> next to this house. What happens? The value of this $5 million house implodes. It ain't worth 5 million bucks anymore, Wiz. What can I do? I can walk away, baby. All I am out is the 50 grand. Now the owner sucks, but folks, woo, I dodged a bullet. The house imploded, I'm out the 50 grand. So let's take a little brief detour into stocks. If you are just a stock trader in this example, you bought the damn house for 5 million bucks. Two weeks later, governor puts a super max in. You lost how much money? 5 million bucks. Stocks can go to zero. And people are like, well, options can go to zero too. Yeah, they can. But I only lost 50 grand in this example. You over here, chump stock buyers, lost 5 million. So right now, if you're one of these people who showed up like, oh, I hear options are dangerous and scary, you've been lied to. Stocks are more dangerous and scary. They can go to zero. The most you can lose on the options contract is the damn price for the options contract. Does everybody understand me? Now let's go in the good direction. Two weeks after Given the 50 grand and you have a contract, an options contract, I have the option to buy this home for 5 million bucks. In the empty lot next to this home, Jesus, Muhammad, Ganesha, uh, Buddha, all come back to life and they set up a healing retreat center next to this home. <laughs> the value of that home goes from 5 million to a, a $100 million home. You have an options contract that says for 50 grand, I can buy this at 5 million bucks. Holy, you just won the lottery, Batman. Okay. Now, in this case, I would take delivery of the house, but I'm going to tell you, in my experience as an options trader, maybe you can even Google this on the SIBO site or something like that. 95 I think it's actually higher than that. 98% of options contracts are never exercised, meaning you get out of it. Like, here's what I could do in this situation. Jesus, Ganesha, Buddha, Muhammad, healing center next door. Holy shit, the house went up in value to $100 million. The value of that options contract probably goes up to $25 million. You could close that and say, I'm going to take the increase in the value of that options contract, baby, and beat it. Okay. But now, obviously, in this funny example, I take the damn house. I would take delivery of the shares, the house in this case. But the majority, the vast majority of options contracts are never exercised. Does everybody understand this example? Okay. So, yeah, well, Benoit, using that math, the value of the options contract exactly would be 95 million. I'm just spitballing. So let me give you another example. I have a buddy who lives in Fort Lauderdale. He's a yacht broker. You know what he does? He trades options on yachts. The dude can't afford a $150 million, 107 foot feed ship or whatever. He trades in and out of the contracts opens a contract it takes what two three years to build one of those things if during the lifetime of it being built rip your face off rally in the yacht sector he gets out of the options contract he sells the contract he's never taken delivery of a yacht he makes filthy money trading options on the yachts now again god forbid Joe Biden gets reelected, massive recession or camel and the yacht market implodes, he might be screwed. He might lose money, but he's still not going to take delivery of a yacht. Does everybody understand this example? This example, folks, if you followed it, you are now officially an options trader. You know what a call option is. And you also know that buyers have rights. 
I have the right to buy this house in the next 30 days at 5 million bucks. Sellers, the home seller, have obligations. I'm obligated to give Wiz the keys to this house in the next 30 days to sell my house at 5 million bucks. Buyers have rights, sellers have obligations. Okay. Remember that for when we go look at an options chain and I start talking about it. Okay. Now that is a call option. What is a put option? Americans typically own three big things. What are they? A home, a car, and some sort of investing portfolio. 401k, Roth IRA, SEP IRA, or you're just saving for retirement. Two out of those three things are required in many states, almost every state to have what? Insurance. Even though most people uh, are driving around without insurance or uh, folks, if you buy a home and it, you got a mortgage, you're gonna have home insurance or they're not giving you the damn mortgage. Same thing in the state of Florida. You have got to have auto insurance. But guess what? Most people don't insure their portfolio against what, Wiz? It going down. So just like the white dudes with the cigars in the smoke-filled room in Chicago coming up with a call option, I think it, a year, two years, whatever, two, three years later, I forget the exact history of options. I used to know this by heart, but folks, it doesn't matter. After years of call options, they're like, giddy up, man. We're not coming out of pocket a lot of money. to con In that example, folks, I came out of pocket 50 grand to control 5 million. Giddy up. A couple years after call options were a big hit, they looked at each other and said, hey, how about we come up with something that makes money if something goes down? right? We want to have the right to put a failing stock, an imploding stock, to somebody. We want to be able to buy insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what a put option is. In general, and we're going to get into specifics, put options make money as something goes down. Now, if you're sitting here as a stock trader, you make money three ways, don't you? It's called the buy, hope, and pray. <laughs> you buy a stock, you hope it goes up, and when it doesn't go up, you get on your knees and pray. Dear God, please help my stock go up. That's why stock traders are chumps. As an options trader, I also make money three ways. I can make money if a stock goes up, I can make money if a stock moves sideways, and I and to print money when stocks go down. As an American, I don't like stocks imploding because people are stupid and they get hurt. People's portfolios blow out and it's ugly. Now, getting rid of my conscience and becoming Gordon Gecko or Jordan Belfort and the Wolf of Wall Street, good. As an options trader, I love a storm. I love the market imploding because put options go through the roof. As people, as the market rolls over and people start to panic, it gets even better. I wrote a book called COVID Crash. We made about two and a half million bucks in a couple of weeks as the market did what? Went down. On some days, looking at the futures market before the opening bell in the morning, breaking news, the Dow futures are down 2,000 points. I'm like, this is going to be awesome. Opening bell sounds. I buy a put on the S&P 500 immediately at the open and within 10 minutes I'm up 50 grand or whatever like that. Panic is awesome. Again, being bipolar as an American, it's not. As a trader, options trader, I love it. Remember folks, stocks can go to zero. Everybody remember this small mom and pop company, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, right? Stocks go to zero, folks, so a newsflash for you. Stocks and crypto can go to zero. All you will lose in an options trade is what you paid, right? Or a credit you get, and we'll talk about that when we get into spreads, okay? Any questions, ladies and gentlemen, on the basics of options? 
because now I'm just going to go over to my damn options chain and start educating you, right? We're going to do some training right now. Holy crap, look at the S&P 500 today. What did I tell you, folks? Well, not you, if you're not a member. I told you what, man? On Monday, what is today? Tuesday? I told you Monday by Friday, I said S&P 500 to the moon, 5,600 uh, on the S&P 500. Look at JP down here, three hours ago. SPX calls, great call on Monday, Wiz, for rip your face off rally. 5,600 call for Friday. He's up four times his money on the call options I told him to buy. Look at that. Look at this rip your face off rally, folks. Absolutely unbelievable. <clears throat> Momentum is a thing, folks. This S&P 500 is on a tear. Look at a nine-month chart of the S&P 500. Look at that. Anybody see a trend here? Speaking of trends, what would you call this chart right here? Look at this chart of the NASDAQ, folks. I want to, I, I just want to pause for effect. This, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I started trading, you know, I, I, this, ladies and gentlemen, I started trading where? Back here. I thought this dot com boom was insanity. And look what happened. Look, where are we? The COVID crash right there. And then we've never looked back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the mother of all bubbles right now. We're in it. This is insane looking at the NASDAQ. Now, you know, well, exactly, Diane. You're going to learn a lot of wizisms. If you're new, you probably have a bunch from the first session. I'm going to give you some more tonight. All right? A couple more of them, folks. The market only cares when it cares. Right? Momentum is a thing. The market doesn't care right now that it's in a bubble. It will. And institutional investors don't walk onto a stage and announce, tomorrow morning, I'm going to get out of all my Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft for an insane profit, but I'm, I'll do it tomorrow. They do it and then sometimes don't even tell anybody, or they do it and then tell everybody. So, folks, as retail traders, man, you can get caught pretty damn quick in a market reversal, okay? So I just wanted to cover that real quick because I saw this chart of the NASDAQ today. I'm like, wow, look at that, I'm putting yikes. Right, and here's another wisdom, write this one down. Trade the market you have, not the one you want. Like I said, I don't necessarily want a down market, but the one we have right now is not stopping. Look at a one-year chart of the S&P 500. Back here, a year ago, we were in normal market, down, up, down, up, down, and then whew, we've never looked back. I told you this in session one, where are we living? You can't trade off the left side of a chart, folks. If you open a brokerage that lets me trade off the left side of the chart, let me know. We have to trade out here in the white, okay? All right, let's go. What are call options? Well, I just gave you the house example. Now let's go look, shameless plug, at Amazon. Why? Because we have a solo Amazon service. Let me put my cheaters on. Let's go back over to here and let's look at Amazon, folks. Amazon. AMZN. Amazon. Same time period as the S&P 500, ripping your face off rally. Look at this. Bouncing off technical levels as needed. To find support, bounced off that, bounced off that. What's the red line? A hundred day moving average. I call this the human, the market circulatory system, right? There's the 20 day, the 50 day, and the 100 day moving averages. It looks like Amazon is sticking right to the moving averages. I could not be more long term bullish on Amazon. I told members five, 10 years ago, whenever it was, Get bullish on Amazon. One of the main reasons is they're going to destroy Rite Aid, Walgreens, and CVS. Rite Aid is out of business. Walgreens is going out of business. CVS will be right behind them. Why? Why would you get in your car and go to Walgreens or CVS with everything locked up behind glass and maybe you get robbed while you're there? 
Instead, you can get on your Amazon app and order a toothbrush and it's here in 50 minutes. Or you need a refill. You get a text, you go to the door. When the doorbell rings or you get a text that says open the door, a drone scans your face and drops your prescription into your hand. Or you go out to the blue truck out front that doesn't have a driver who is unionized and needs to pee and eat and complain. They're going to be gone and it's going to be an electric vehicle. You're going to enter your PIN number on the side and a door will open and your package will pop out. So, little detour in why I'm bullish on Amazon. If you, you believe that, what's it called? Step three of my trade plan. If you just listen to those three to five sentences that I said, that's called commit criteria. Step one of the trade plan, strategic mindset. I already told you in the last session what I am. I am what, folks? Cautiously bullish. Step two of the trade plan. What is it? The target. My target to talk about tonight is Amazon. Step three, commit criteria. I just gave it to you. I can give you more on Amazon, but three, three to five sentences was enough. Step four, the tactic. In this case, let's talk about Amazon. Wiz, I love what you're saying about Amazon. But right now, man, if I wanted to buy 100 shares of Amazon, obviously the market's closed, but if I wanted to buy 100 shares of Amazon right now, it's 19,000 bucks, 20. Allow me to round up. To buy 100 shares of Amazon today, you're coming out of pocket $20,000. Cue the white guys with the cigars in Chicago. How about this? How about we, and let's talk about the options chain real quick. Let me deselect everything. This is going to be what's called an options chain. Before I bring it up, look at the top. Dates. What did I tell you in the Aspen House example? I said I gave you a strike price, 5 million bucks, and a date, 30 days from now. So the first thing we're going to talk about with options is up at the top here. These are dates that the options that you select expire. That's when that contract is over. Now let's slide this to the right. Look at what we can do. We can hop in a time machine and go all the way out to December of the year 2026. Why is this important? It's important because this is not your father and mother stock market anymore. The average holding time for those people, I bought, I bought st stock in GM, they mailed me the share certificates and they're in the shoebox in the garage. Those days are over with folks. The average holding time that people have for stocks is a year, if that, maybe a couple years. People get in and out or they move around. So, in the world of options, we can go a couple years out into the future and get bullish or bearish on a name, okay? So having said that, let's select the December 26th expiration for Amazon. As Soon as I clicked on it, this populated, okay? This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call an options chain, just because it's a bunch, it looks like a bunch of links in a chain, okay? In the middle here, I selected December 26th. It tells you it does the math for you. That's 891 days away. Down the middle here are what's called the strike prices. Okay, the $5 million house in Aspen, that was the strike place, strike price. Okay, now on the left side of the options chain are calls. You know what a call option is. Usually call options, you want something to go up. We'll talk in a couple minutes how it can be the opposite. Puts, generally, if I buy a put, I think something's going to go down and I can make money with it going down. So on the left are calls and on the right are puts. Now, if you see kind of behind the gray right here, Amazon closed right around 200 bucks. So you see 200 here? Below 200, if you got your glasses on like I do, it's there's a little color in the back here, a little light gray, okay? 
And with the puts, it's a little light gray here. Okay, let's stick with the calls for now. With Amazon closing at 200 bucks, any options underneath 200 bucks are what we call in the money. Kind of makes sense, right? If I buy a 170 strike call, the stock's at 200 bucks. I already have $30 of value. It's in the money. Okay. Now that should be pretty clear to you. The stuff that isn't light gray in the background, those are called what? Out of the money options. Because with the stock at 200 bucks, any of these strikes above 200 bucks are called out of the money. And obviously, folks, the 200 strike is ATM at the money. Okay. So there are a bunch of things that go into the price of an option. In the old days, I used to watch some of these lectures and fall asleep. There are seven things that go into the price of an option, and I'm not going to bore you with it. I can send you videos that'll put you to sleep. My point being is this, when you talk about an option being in the money, it means it has some meat on the bones. It has two types of value. They're called extrinsic and intrinsic. Don't worry about the big words. It's meat. Hey man, these 170 calls have a lot of time left on them and they have a lot of price. They're in the money whiz by 30 bucks. Extrinsic and intrinsic value, okay? Now, the calls that are out of the money essentially have time value, right? For lack of a better word, these are lottery tickets, right? Now, let's go back to our example. Wiz, I want to buy 100 shares of Amazon. I don't have 20 grand. Why don't we do this? Let's buy one Amazon contract. Remember, one options contract equals 100 shares of Amazon stock. If I buy one December of 2026, 200 call, ladies and gentlemen, I just saved you $15,000. To all my stock traders out there, would you rather spend 20 grand to buy Amazon or five? If your answer is 20, dismiss yourself and you're an idiot. Now, some of you who trade stocks might go, well, Wiz, you're not a shareholder, so you don't get two things. You don't get a dividend. Jeff Bezos chokes on the word dividend. Jeff Bezos, this is why it's a, almost, a, what is it, $2 trillion company or whatever? Jeff Bezos goes, dividends are stupid. If I make $1 at Amazon this quarter, I'm taking that dollar and buying a new airplane, putting a competitor out of business, making a new series on Amazon Prime, building Amazon Pharma out more. Ain't no dividend at Amazon, folks. The other thing you don't get if you trade call options is to vote. Last time I checked, Jeff Bezos and his ex-wife probably have a couple more shares than you do in Amazon, so your vote doesn't matter. So don't try and be Cliff Clavin like, well, Wiz, if you do call options, you can't and don't own the stock, you don't get these two things. And you're an idiot. So oh, happy anniversary, Scott. That's cool. 20th anniversary dinner. So ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about this real quick. If you're new, there's something here called the ask. That's the homeowner in Aspen. I'm asking 5 million bucks. Then there's something called the bid. That's me. I'm going to offer 4.5 million, not a dime over it. And then what happens? There's something called mid market. That is where the middle of a market is. There's the ask, there's the bid, there's the middle. When I place my trades, I tend to put them at mid market and hang out, throwing a lure over the side of the boat, waiting to get a nibble. If you really, really, really want to get into something, you come in at the ask. I'm asking 5 million for the house. I want the house, here's 5 million. You're gonna get filled immediately. If you come in at the bid, you're never gonna get filled, okay? That 
is the bid, the ask, and the mid. Any question on call options? This is a call option, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of, instead of spending 20 grand, you're spending five. Now, if you're sitting here going, I love that, man. You just saved me 15 grand that I can go do what with? Do other call options with. You're not tied up 15 grand. Wiz, I ain't got five grand to buy Amazon, but I'm super bullish on it. Well, folks, why don't we go take a look at some out of the money calls? In by December of 2026, let's just assume, folks, that this happens with Amazon. Barring Joe, Kamala, World War III, China, Ukraine, Israel, I, barring us being vaporized in a couple of years, let's, for the sake of shits and grins, Amazon keeps going up and to the right. Well, at some point in the future here, it's going to be at around, you know, we're at 200 bucks today. Whiz, I think in two and a half years, it's going to be at 250 or 300. Let's pick the market likes round numbers. By December 2026, Wiz, I think Amazon is a $300 stock. Guess what? I agree. So why don't we go buy? Sorry. Let's see if there's a 300 strike call option. I'm going to have to click all so it shows me all the strikes. And look at how funny this is, folks. I clicked all up here because I want to see all the available strikes on this name. The highest it goes is to the 290 strike. There ain't no 300s. And look at the volume and open interest. Open interest takes two to tango, right? That's what open interest means. There's a lot of open interest at the 250 strike. And there's also some open interest at the 280. So let's just stick with being close to 300. Why don't we buy? a single 290 call can you swing this two grand amazon has two and a half years to be above 290 and instead of 20 grand for 100 shares instead of five grand for an at the money 200 call we went up to 290 and it would only be 2,000 bucks. Yay. Now let's talk about some math. Whenever I click on analysis, I'm going to train you in the rest of our sessions like Pavlov's dog. Whenever I click on this, the only place your eyeballs are going to go is to max potential loss. You ready? Three, two, one. Right there. Max potential loss. Do not ever look here first. Max profit in this trade is infinity and beyond. Holy shit. The only place you will look first is here. What is my max potential loss in this trade? And I've already told you folks, when you're trading options, you can only lose what you put out of your pocket. The max potential loss in this trade is two grand. Why does this say infinite? Because ladies and gentlemen, the options market doesn't know how Amaz high Amazon can potentially go when we get into spreads that you will see a number up here. But this is, you have potential unlimited upside a year from now. Breaking news, Jesus just came back and he decided to be the CEO of Amazon. The stock is trading up at a thousand points. That's why anything can happen to the upside, folks. Okay. So the max potential loss in this trade is what you put out of pocket, okay? Now that is buying a call option. If you followed that folks, welcome to being an options trader. It doesn't get any harder than that. That's the basic blocking and tackling. Now let's take the exact opposite example, okay? I'm gonna reduce my strikes back to about seeing 12 of them. Wiz, I think you're an idiot. That's a distinct possibility. Between now and December of 2026, it's World War III. And Amazon's most likely going to go to zero. But folks, if it's World War III, you're not going to care that Amazon's at zero. So, But anyway, for demonstration purposes, let's say 
I think Amazon's going to implode, dude. Well, you could buy an at the money put option. You buy a single December 2026 20, 200 put, you're coming out of pocket 3000 bucks. And let's be really quick about it. How much can you lose? Say it with me, 3000 bucks. But wait, hold on, Wiz. There's a number up here. The max potential profit in this trade is 17 grand. Yeah. Because when you buy this put option, the lowest Amazon can go is what? Zero. Pets.com, Enron, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, stocks can go to zero. So that's why your profit is limited. If Amazon goes to zero in the next two and a half years, you make 17,000 bucks. Okay? That's the most you can do. Remember, buyers have rights. If Amazon implodes below 200, I have the right, this is why it's called a put option. I have the right to put those shares, the 100 shares, at 200 bucks to everybody on the other side of the trade that sold me this put option. We're going to get to that in a couple of minutes. Buyers have rights, sellers have obligations. Okay? That's a put option, folks. That's buying a put option. Doesn't get any easier than that. Same thing with the bid, the mid, and the ask, okay? Buying a call option, bullish. Buying a put option, bearish. Buying a call option, I think it's going up. Buying a put option, I think it's going down. Any questions on buying and selling calls or puts? Again, I'm gonna remind you, 42 minutes into this brief, if you're following me like, huh, you're an options trader, it's official. It doesn't get any more difficult than this. We just kind of stack different legs on top of each other. But if you get these basics, you're good. Now let's flip the script just a little bit. If I'm buying a call option and I'm bullish, there's somebody on the other side of the trade. Somebody has to sell me the call. I'm buying this call because I think Amazon's going up, baby. <laughs> I'm going to sell it to you, baby, because I think Amazon's going down. So let's talk about the opposite. All strikes again. Let's use that 290 call as an example. If I sell a single DS26 290 call, I am saying I do not believe by December of 2026 that Amazon is going to be above 290. What do I get for that? Remember, buyers, it's a debit. You're coming out of pocket. When you sell something, your house, a car, an airplane, when you sell something to somebody, you get paid. So, ladies and gentlemen, selling this call option, I get paid. $2,000. Wow. Wiz, I don't, I don't think Amazon's going to be above 290 all the way out the, at that point. I'd like to make two grand. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't even like giving you this example. My hands are shaking right now. Why? Three, two, one. You have infinite max potential loss. Why? When you sell the 290 call option, you're saying that's the roof, man. Ain't going above 290 and pay me for, for my opinion. Jesus, CEO of Amazon, the stock rips up to 500. You, as a call seller, remember sellers have obligations. You are obligated to deliver 100 shares, one contract equals 100. You are obligated to deliver 100 shares to the call buyer at what strike? 290. Holy shit, man. Whiz, this stock went up to 500 bucks and I was short. I sold these 290 calls. Ladies and gentlemen, do not ever do this. 
this is what is called naked. Usually naked's fun. Naked call options are insanity. As a matter of fact, just about everybody in this room, I don't even, I think I might have level five authority. I'm not, I, who cares? I'm not going to do it. You need, I think it's level five options authority to sell naked calls. You will never see me selling naked calls. But we're in academic training. I'm going to show you who's on the other side of, I'm buying these call options. I'm bullish. Dude or lady on the other side's like, you're an idiot. It's going down. You have unlimited risk when you sell a call option. Naked, meaning there's no other leg. And we'll talk about that in spreads next week. Any questions about naked calls? And look, folks, do you really want to risk a shitload of potential loss to make two grand in the next two and a half years? The answer is no. So I'm doing it for academic reasons, briefing this, but this terrifies me. And I don't get terrified of many things. Naked call options are global thermonuclear weapons. How do I know? I helped build the retail brokerage options house. We had a guy who was selling naked calls. God, oh, I forget the name, what he was trading. Got blown out, million bucks. The guy disappeared. Options house had to eat that loss. Guy just to the wind. After that day, no naked call, you know, that was stupid. Okay, so no naked call selling, but there's somebody on the other side of that trade. So if you're sitting here going, well, Wiz, if I'm buying these call options, what idiot is selling them to me? Not going to be an idiot. They're going to have some other legs, they're called, on. They ain't naked, I guarantee you. So we'll, we'll clean that up next week with spreads. Now, let's go back to puts. Let's do the exact opposite. You, and you know what? I forgot to cover this. Let's talk about a realistic put with Amazon because I talked about a realistic call up at 290. Folks, let's go look at a chart. Amazon, before this insane liftoff, was trading right around 145. Wiz, I think whoever wins the election, they're screwed. It's a ticking time bomb. The debt in this country, we're probably going to see a tech wreck or the market implode. I think Amazon's going to retest some lows. All right, pretty solid commit criteria. I don't necessarily agree with it, but it's solid. Go look at the 145 calls out to December 2026. What are those? Buying a single DS26 145 put is a grand. That is some cheap insurance. Let me take a brief tangent here. If you're a stock trader right now, if you're looking at your portfolio going, man, I have a lot of stock positions. Are you protecting your long stock positions buying some puts? Every month, USAA debits my checking account for my auto, home, and life. I don't even remember I'm paying insurance. That's what most institutions do, institutional traders, long only hedge funds. They do what? No, at a minimum, we're at, let's each month we're going to buy X amount of uh, put protection underneath our profits. Smart. Wiz, I'm, I'm a shareholder in Amazon. I'm a little scared in case it goes down. Take some coin off the table, baby, and buy some protection. This would be realistic. Over the next two and a half years, I want to protect my long stock. Buy some puts. Okay. So I forgot to talk about a realistic put for Amazon. That might be it. Or even, I don't know, you could go shorter dated, right? Uh, and you know what? I'll end on that because I, I'll talk through a Christmas trade with Amazon. I'm just using the furthest out in time example, right? We can always look at what? Hey, Wiz, I've heard you before, but now I'm going to join. There's always usually a Christmas rally. Amazon tends to, after Black Friday and people beat each other up, Amazon usually sees a rip your face off rally through Christmas, Kwanzaa, winter solstice, hovers in January and usually sells in February after earnings. Even if they crush it, they usually sell off, 
because people take profits. So we could buy some call options out to January and play the Santa Claus rally. Okay, little little side pump there because if you're sitting here like, why is this dude looking two and a half years out in the future? Well, guess what? You could. I just showed you JP in the Max Afterburner group. I told him on Monday, I'm like, dude, buy some 5,600 S&P 500 calls to Friday. Whiz, they're up four times what I paid for them on Monday when you told me to do it. And it's Wednesday. You're welcome. So we can always look at shorter dated options as well. All right, let's stick with the put. I talked about buying a put. Now let's talk about selling a put. Who's on the other side of you going, Amazon's going down, I'm buying some put protection. There's somebody going, you're an idiot, man. Amazon ain't going down, it's only going to go up. So selling a put, you're essentially becoming an insurance company. You're selling a put option and you're bringing in a premium. If the hurricane doesn't hit, you kept the premium. Sell another put option. Hurricane doesn't hit, you keep the premium. God forbid hurricane hits, oh shit. Now you're on the hook. So let's talk about the other side of the at the money. Put buyer would be the put seller. Selling a single D26 200 put does what? Oh man, I'm bringing in three grand. That's awesome. Kind of like a naked call. Let's freak out about a naked put. What is your max potential loss? Holy crap, $17,000. Why? It's not infinite, right? Because Amazon can only go to zero. So this put seller is saying, hey man, it's not going below 200 all the way out into the future. If it does, I'm on the hook. If it goes to zero, I'm out $17,000. This is also called what? Naked. Ain't selling naked calls, ain't selling naked puts. But you have to understand that because we're going to do some spread stuff next week where you're going to be like, oh, okay, it's not naked anymore. Exactly. We're in session two where we're talking about the basics of options. So you need to understand this. Sellers have obligations, buyers have rights, okay? Anyway, well, and Scott, we'll talk about that, right? The next session tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we're gonna talk about cash secured puts. Completely different than a naked put. Cash secured puts, Scott, I do all the time too, but they're secured by what? Cash. They're not naked, okay? Now, real quick, I forgot to be doing this the whole time, but let's talk about break-evens. Let's start again with the call options. Wiz, all the way out to December of 2026, I'm gonna buy one at the money Amazon 200 call. Coming out of pocket five grand. Folks, what does Amazon have to be above for you to make money? For all the political science majors in this room, I'm gonna help you out. It says it right here, 250 bucks. I bought the 200 strike call for 50 bucks. It needs to be above 200 plus 50 bucks, 250. This is all basic stuff, but I need to do my academic training with you. Does that make sense? Bought the 200 strike for 50 bucks. It needs to be at 200 plus what I paid for it, 50 bucks. A total of 250. Everybody give me a vertical head nod. Let's go look at the really far out of the money one, right? The 290. Buy a single Amazon D26 290 call for two grand. For 20 bucks. What does it have to be at? Do the math. 310. 290 plus the 20 bucks I came out of pocket. Does everybody understand that? Let's stick with the buying. Let's go with the puts. If I bought a single 290 put for 30 bucks, it's what? Well, it has to implode through 200 for me to make money. I paid 30 bucks. Do the political science math, 170. 
vertical head nod, right? And I'm rounding close, folks, right? If you get it for 30, 35, it's going to be 169.65, 170. $200 strike price. I came out of pocket 30, 200 minus 30 bucks. Amazon needs to implode through 170 for me to be profitable. Follow? Savvy? Now let's do the selling. Let's sell a single naked 290 call. All right, I sold that call 290 and I brought in 20 bucks. 290 plus 310. It needs to stay under that, folks, right? I sold the 290, I brought in 20 bucks. If it stays under 310, I'm making some profit, right? If it goes above 310, I'm in trouble. Do not do this. Let's go with the put sell. What was it? 145. Let's sell, sorry, a single D26 145 put for 10 bucks. 145, right? You sold this put minus the 10 bucks, 140, 134. Okay. It's all on the screen, folks. In the old days on the floor, dudes are doing math mentally, right? Yeah, this now it's all computerized. The answer is given to you. Okay, any questions about calls, puts, buying, or selling? Anyone. Realistically, if I, hey, Wiz, what would you do today with Amazon? Right now, folks, I'd probably sit on my hands since we're on a big run, but sometime soon, I would start getting my Christmas trade on. Usually each year, after October-ish, I have it on my calendar. I'll give you dates to put in your calendars too. I go, hey man, Christmas trades, put them on. Visa, Amazon, XLY is a, a good Christmas trade. It's the consumer discretionary ETF, people buying things. What else do I do around Christmas? Usually it's just Amazon folks, but if, you, if you're interested now, man, go out to January, or I'm sorry, yeah, January of, 2025, I can't even believe that. And maybe buy some upside calls. Which ones? I don't know. What are we at 200 right now? 10% of that, 220. I think we, we can get another 10% by the end of the year in Amazon. Maybe go up to 225. I would buy, you want a good Christmas trade? Buy a single Jan 25, 225 call. Think it's going to go higher than that? 250 buy a single Jan 25 250 call for 480 bucks. Again, folks, if you wanted to buy a hundred shares of Amazon today, you're coming out of pocket 20 grand. To control a hundred shares of Amazon out to the post Christmas time period, and you think it's really going to have a rip your face off rally, it's 480 bucks, man. A little bit of a little bit of a lotto ticket, right? The further out of the money you go, the more I call them lottery tickets, right? But take a look at some of these strikes in the open interest, man. Look at that. 6,200. Somebody's out there saying, yeah, man, I think 250 is pretty damn good for January for Amazon. Okay. Now, there's a distinct possibility that person or institution might be a complete idiot, but there's also some people are like, I know something, right? The 270 strike, look at this, the 280, holy crap, 255. So these are, let's go, go all the way down to the 290s by um, January. Wiz, lottery ticket. I'm going to buy a single Jan 25, 290 call option. It's 140 bucks. It's a bottle of uh, Camus at a steak place. But that's also why I call it a little bit of a lottery ticket. Folks, you're not going to come into the options market and sneak. Not taking a lot of risk, you're not going to have to pay a lot of money. Taking a lot of risk to potentially make a lot of money, 
it's going to cost you, right? So obviously these lotto tickets out in the future are cheaper. The closer you get to at the money, you know, the 290s are what, a dollar forty? What's at the money out to January? 20 bucks, 2025, man. Go in the money. Let's go down to that has meat on the bones. Holy crap. Yeah. 39, 40 bucks. Why is divorce expensive? It's worth it, right? Why are in the money options really, really expensive? We already talked about it. They have extrinsic and intrinsic value. Time and moneyness. I think that's a word. It is. It has time value out to January and it's got meat on the bones. It's the 170 strike and the stock's at 200 bucks, dude. I got 30 bucks of meat on the bone. Savvy, everybody understand that, right? So sitting here tonight, what's a realistic Amazon trade for me? Go get your Christmas trade on right now, okay? Being completely honest, I think we might have something up here coming soon. Remember, and I briefed, I don't know if I briefed you in session one on this or in the live trade brief this morning. Remember folks, these night sessions are exactly that. The market's closed whatever. Me, tomorrow morning, when I go into the live trade briefs, we practically apply everything we learned tonight. Hey, we talked about this last night. Now we're going to do it in the market. I'm going to show you my portfolio and use real money. Let's go. Demo do. That's how we learn in the military. I'm going to demonstrate as your instructor. Then we're going to go do in the airplane. I'm going to show you it in the airplane. Then I'm going to give you the flight controls. You got it. Don't kill me. I love me too much. Okay. Hour, hour and two minutes. Wanted to go an hour, almost through the bullseye, right through the bullseye. Before we break for tonight, any questions, concerns, or oh, by the ways. Same link tomorrow morning to get into the 10 a.m. brief. Taking that building block approach, we're going to start talking about covered calls, Scott alluded to, cash secured puts, not naked, and also something called a collar building block approach. So to all my stock traders in the room who always were told that options are dangerous and creepy and bad, hopefully I changed your mind. If you followed the basics that I covered tonight, welcome aboard being an options trader. The motto of Top Gun, you think you're good, we'll make you better. And it's awesome because I, I love people who are familiar or who currently trade options come into our options weapons school training because a lot of the times I'm like, I never looked at it that way or I never heard that or that's interesting or I learned something from that. So don't feel bad if you're new, like, wow, now I know what to call this. I didn't hatch the world's greatest, I did hatch the world's greatest fighter pilot. I didn't hatch as the world's greatest options trader. I had to train and learn. So if you're new to options and you're following right now, like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging then you got it. There ain't no, it doesn't get worse. <laughs> if, to, if you follow it tonight, the basics, you are officially an options trader. I will give you the uh, Top Gun options patch on your shoulder when you complete the training. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? Oh, by the way, is exactly. Make me good. I'll make you rich. Boom. Quick reminder, make sure you're checking out, uh, the, especially this most recent podcast, talking about a miracle at the Do Good Ranch. A 9-11 survivor who has had a horrific speech impediment since that day started his healing two weeks ago at the Do Good Ranch in Colorado with psychedelic assisted therapy. You're going to be blown away by this podcast. If you're driving in a car or working out, you can listen to it on Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, wherever cool kids listen to podcasts. There is the Max Afterburner podcast. Listen to the most recent podcast, folks. I'm telling you, it's going to blow you away. It blew me away. I actually re-listened to this because I wanted, I'm like, holy shit, that was really cool. So make sure you get up to speed on the Max Afterburner podcast. All right, guys, I got to go. It's going to take me about 30 minutes, or it's going to take the computer about 30 minutes to render this recording. After it's rendered, underneath memberships, options, weapons school, it's going to be popped right there underneath session one. If you didn't get a chance to watch session one, choke yourself. Well, no, watch it first and then you can choke yourself. 
All right, man and ladies, I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for our building block approach. You're welcome, Mark. Have a great rest of your night. Happy hunting. Make sure you're hedged. Now you know how to trade puts. You can be hedged in case this market implodes. Fights on. Namaste and basi basi. Wiz out. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m.